Navy Yard. That's part of why uh, our event today was delayed. Uh, I've been briefed by my team on the situation. Uh, we still don't know all the facts, uh, but we do know that several people have been shot and some have been killed. So uh, we are confronting uh, yet another mass shooting. And today it happened on a military installation in our nation's capital. Uh, it's a shooting that targeted our military and civilian personnel. These are men and women uh, who were going to work, doing their job, uh, protecting all of us. They're patriots. And they know the dangers of serving abroad, uh, but today they face the unimaginable violence uh, that they wouldn't have expected here at home. So we offer our gratitude to the Navy uh, and local law enforcement, federal authorities, and the doctors who've responded with skill and bravery. Uh, I've made it clear to my team that I want the investigation to be seamless so that federal and local authorities are working together. And as this investigation moves forward, uh, we will do everything in our power to make sure whoever carried out uh, this cowardly act is held responsible. In, in the meantime, we send our thoughts and prayers uh, to all at the Navy Yard who have been touched by this tragedy. Uh, we thank them for their service. Uh, we stand with the families uh, of those who have uh, been harmed. Uh, they're going to need our love and support. And as we learn more about the courageous Americans who died today, uh, their lives, their families, their patriotism, uh, we will honor their service to the nation. Uh, they helped to make great. And obviously, we're going to be investigating thoroughly what happened, uh, as we do so many of these shootings, sadly, that have happened, uh, and do everything that we can to try to prevent them. Now, uh, in recent weeks, much of our attention has been focused on the events in Syria. The horrible use of chemical weapons on innocent people, including children, the need for a firm response from the international community, and over the weekend we took an important step in that direction uh, towards moving Syria's chemical weapons under international control so that they can be destroyed. And uh, we're not there yet, but if properly implemented, this agreement could end the threat these weapons pose not only to the Syrian people but uh, to the world. I want to be clear, though, that uh, even as we've dealt with the situation in Syria, we've continued to focus on my number one priority since the day I took office, making sure we recover from the worst economic crisis of our lifetimes and rebuilding our economy so it works for everybody uh, who's willing to work hard, so that everybody who's willing to take responsib uh, responsibility for their lives has a chance to get ahead. It was five years ago this week that the financial crisis rocked Wall Street and sent an economy already into recession into a tailspin. And it's hard sometimes to remember uh, everything that happened uh, during those, those months, but in a matter of a frightening few days and weeks, some of the largest investment banks in the world failed, stock markets plunged. Banks stopped lending to families and small businesses. Our auto industry, the heartbeat of American manufacturing, was flatlining. By the time I took office, the economy was shrinking by an annual rate of more than 8 percent. Our businesses were shedding 800,000 jobs each month. It was a perfect storm that would rob millions of Americans of jobs and homes and savings that they had worked a lifetime to build. And it also laid bare the long erosion of a middle class that for more than a decade has had to work harder and harder just to keep up. In fact, most Americans who've known economic hardship these past several years, they don't think about the collapse of Lehman Brothers when they think about the recession. Uh, instead, they recall the day they got the gut punch of a pink slip or the day the, a bank took away their home, the day they got sick but didn't have health insurance, or the day they had to sit their daughter or son down and tell him or her that they couldn't afford to send.